Hi, I'm Richard, and I'm here to introduce you to our Web Payments SDK. Our Web Payments SDK allows you to build your own custom payment flows into a website for accepting ACH, credit cards, gift cards, or digital wallets. The Web Payments SDK is used along with our Payments API to securely process payment information. In a traditional web app, you would have a front end and a back end. It's best to think of Web Payments SDK as what is used to securely capture payment information in your front end to pass to your back end. Let's get started. First, we need to include the Web Payments SDK in the header of the HTML page we want to load our payment methods on. To do that, just include the script tag in your page. Here we are using Sandbox, but be sure to change this in production. Now that we have the script tag in our page, we can initialize the Web Payments SDK by calling square.payments, passing in our app ID and location ID, and we'll assign that to the payments variable. We now have the Web Payments SDK initialized. Let's create our card object so we can render the credit card form. We'll await on calling payments.card and assign that to the card variable. The card method accepts an optional card options parameter that allows you to change the behavior of your payment form and configured styles. Be sure to check our docs for more information on that. We have our card object, so now we want to attach it to the DOM by awaiting the cards attach method and passing in the ID of the DOM element we want to attach our credit card form to. Now, we just need to indicate when we want to tokenize the information our buyer has entered into the credit card form. For this, just use the card object's tokenize method. To keep things easy, I'm just going to add an event listener on a button with the ID of pay to trigger when it is clicked and call tokenize inside that event listener. We now have the bare minimum for rendering our payment form. So let's go to our browser to see what it looks like. We have a payment form here. If we enter in the sandbox credit card info, we'll see the brand of the card and it'll automatically switch between fields as we enter them. Then, if we click the pay button, it alerts our response from the tokenization request. Instead of alerting in your app, you'll want to send the token you get from that response to your backend to process a payment or store those card details. That covers the basics for creating a credit card form. But now let's look at how you can support bank payments using ACH via the Web Payments SDK. You'll follow the same steps we used earlier, but this time we'll be getting our ACH object from the Web Payments SDK. For ACH, we need a way to specify the account holder name. You can have a field where a buyer enters this, or you might choose to use information from a customer profile you've already created. Here, we'll just retrieve a name from an input field. Now we just need to call the tokenize method like we did with the card object, but this time we're passing in an object that has the account holder name in it. Again, I'm doing this inside of the event listener that I have attached to the pay button. Let's take a look at how the flow works now. I just enter my name here and then click on the pay button. Pops up a modal and I can just enter the test credentials to complete the flow. And now we have an alert showing us the token we can send to our backend. Now that we've seen how you can support doing bank payments using ACH via the Web Payments SDK, Let's take a look at digital wallet payments, starting with Google Pay. Again, you want to follow the same steps for initializing the Web Payments SDK, but since we're using a digital wallet, we need to create a payment request object. We need to do this so the digital wallet can display the correct information when loading their interface. Next, we will initialize the Google Pay object by awaiting the payments.googlepay method, passing in our payment request object. Now, we can attach this to the DOM by awaiting the Google Pay dot attach method, passing in the ID of the element we want to attach this to. Then, I'm just going to add an event listener on that element to detect when it has been clicked and await on the Google Pay dot tokenize method. Let's now take a look at what this looks like in the browser. We can see it has loaded the Google Pay button here, and if we click on it, we start the Google Pay payment flow. Now, let's see how we handle this for Apple Pay. Same as before, initialize the Web Payments SDK and create your payment request object. Then we will await on the payments.applepay method while passing in our payment request object. Now, a key difference here is that we don't need to attach anything to the DOM. We will just create an event listener on the Apple Pay button that will trigger the applepay.tokenize method. Let's take a look at what this looks like in our browser. We have an Apple Pay button here, and if we click on it, it will start up the Apple Pay payment flow. Just like with the others, when we complete the payment, we'll get back a result from our tokenized request. Our final payment method that we'll cover is gift cards. This process will be very similar to the card method, but especially designed for gift cards. 
You can check out our video on gift cards for more details on implementing the full gift card payment flow. Just as with the others, we'll want to initialize the web payments SDK. Then we want to initialize the gift card object. So we'll just create a gift card variable and assign it by waiting on the payment.giftcard method. You can optionally pass in a gift card options object to change the look and behavior of the gift card form. Check our docs for more details on that. Again, we'll just create an event listener and attach it to the pay button so that we can trigger our tokenize method when it is clicked. So let's take a look at what our gift card form looks like. We'll just input the sandbox test gift card number here and see it adjusting the logo. When we click, we see our tokenization response being returned. Great, that covers getting started with the web payments SDK payment methods. We've covered the basics for setting up credit cards, ACH, digital wallets, and gift cards. Be sure to check our documentation for more information. Happy coding.